My name is Larry Luba. I'm a canine handler for uh, Allegheny Mountain Rescue Group, and my dog's name is Bella, and she's a Belgian Malinois, five years old. Training for the uh, for the canine group, uh, I actually started it uh, almost three years ago, uh, and uh, it's, it's, the training's fairly intense, not just for the dog, but also for the handler. Uh, there's a lot of skills that you have to uh, uh, accomplish, uh, not just uh, a written test, but also you know, a hands-on application. And that has to do with uh, anything from uh, uh, search and rescue for uh, human or also human remains, as well as cave rescue and vertical or high angle rescue. The difficulties in, in training any, uh, any canine is uh, being able to read your dog. And probably the hardest one is to be able to trust your dog. Uh, we as humans think we know more than them, but when it comes to air scent, uh, and that dog's nose, they are far superior than us. So the, the toughest part is for us to be just be able to trust your dog, to be able to read your dog when it picks up a scent, and uh, let your dog do its business, and that is lead you back to the, uh, the person that's lost. Was it seeing the dog with the vest on compared to the vest off? It was like two different dogs entirely. I mean, when the vest was on, she was ready to work, didn't care about anybody else who was around, didn't really, you know, want any other human interaction other than with her handler. But then as soon as it came off, you know, she was sociable and playful and wanted everyone to pet her. Um, so it's kind of cool to see how differently it just like is on and off. What would you think would be a good idea to say to someone who's interested in helping out with uh, search and rescue missions such as this? Um, I would say keep an open mind and just try it. I mean, there's already so much I learned today that there's no way that anyone could have just told me or taught me without actually seeing it hands-on.